This is part three, the final part of our studio tour. We're talking all about cameras, editing software, and lighting. Let's get into it. What's happening guys? I hope you're all absolutely fantastic. My name is Dave Major and welcome into my channel. Today is part three of our studio tour and we're talking all about cameras, lighting, and what I use to edit videos, including the one that you're watching right now. If you haven't checked out part one and two of the studio tour, then please do check that out. Um, you'll understand the audio that we're using and then the construction and how I've actually got this room set up the way I want it to be. Today we're talking about cameras, today we're talking about lighting. So let's start with the cameras. I run a three camera setup for all my drum videos. Depending on what I'm doing, it could be a different combination of angles and things like that, but it's always the same cameras, the same lenses. So the main cameras I'm using are two Canon 70Ds and then the main lenses are a Sigma Art Series 18 to 35 times two and then a 50 mil Art Series again. They're awesome lenses, they look great and they're very kindly loaned to me by my great friend David, who is badass, I'll link his channel below. He's helped me on loads of videos, including this one, this Natal one, this other Natal one we've done. He's done lots of the Drum Central stuff and he's helped me with loads and loads of stuff. So he's great. Thank you, David, for loaning me the cameras. This would not be possible without you. What I do is I set up uh, the two best cameras as my main angles and I've got the 70D at the front. Right now, this is the only camera I'm using, but then I have a side angle when I'm doing drum kit videos. And then I've actually got a 600D overhead, which is a brand new feature. That camera is mounted on the rigging and is pointed directly down above my drum kit. And I think it's a really killer shot. I'm really enjoying using that. Now when I'm filming, every camera gets plugged in through HDMI to an HDMI splitter, which then sends the signal to a TV, which is mounted on the far side of the wall. I use that to check framing, to check the various different tools that I've got to make sure the exposure is correct. And just generally to make sure everything is recording because the amount, I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've sat and recorded something and I haven't pressed record. I haven't, sorry, I had to check I'm recording now. I haven't pressed record. I haven't recorded the audio. Something has stopped. Something has, the camera's died, the battery's died. So having a TV uh, sort of far end of the wall, I can just flick through all the inputs and check everything's working just before I film. It's just an amazing peace of mind. And I'm just running that. That's again, just Amazon stuff. I'm trying to solve problems because I could get an HDMI monitor and I could have everything with me. And, but I had all these things available. So I thought, well, I'll do this it's a little bit cheaper. One of the main reasons why this has taken me three attempts to actually film this blooming <laughs> studio tour is that I've constantly upgraded things like lighting and the setup and I've just basically just made things better since the first time that I filmed it. So I thought, well, what's the point in putting out an old one? I may as well do an absolutely up-to-date one. One of the main things I've improved so far is the lighting. Now, the main light I'm using is a Godox um, SL60W, uh, which I imagine stands for 60 watts. And it's a big LED light and the amazing thing about it is I can remote control it. Off, on, off, on. If you're sitting behind a drum kit and you wanna change the light, if you're having to get up, unplug all your stuff, your in-ears come out and you get tangled and you fall over, done that. Then you go and have to turn the light down or you have to move it further away. And then you go back on, okay, that's not quite right. And you keep going back and forth. It's such a pain in the ass. Basically, it's just a nice way of upgrading my setup because lighting is so important for videos. Then I'm using two LED panels and I'm using one as a hair light above me on the rigging. And then I've got one with a really, really janky diffuser in front of it, which I use as a fill light. So standard three point lighting setup, but with nice bright lights because a drum kit is a massive, massive area that you do need to light pretty effectively. On the back wall, we've got those blue LED strips, which I can remote control and change the color of, which I really, really like. And that's my lighting setup. All the cameras are remote controlled through this little doofer, which is a lifesaver. And even my heater is remote controlled. Now, once I've recorded all the footage and all the audio, and it's all mixed and it's all ready, everything comes into Premiere Pro and I edit from there. Once I've edited it and color graded it, I then export it, upload it to all the website lessons are on Vimeo and all my YouTube lessons are very obviously on YouTube. So that's my setup guys, everything from the room itself, the sets, the cameras, the lights, the audio, that's everything I've got as of 2020. It is February, what is it? February 21st, 2020, that's it. I will upgrade. I would love some more cameras. I would love some better mics. I might add some extra mics. I would love to just keep constantly upgrading, mainly because I want to make better videos. And like I said, right at the start of a few weeks ago, this year is all about making better stuff. 
not just churning out noise into the void of YouTube. I wanna make better stuff with the hope that more people will like it, but mainly because I like it. If you enjoyed this video and this series, please do hit like, please hit subscribe. Stay tuned for so much more cool stuff this year. Thank you very much for watching. I will catch you soon. Take care.